short sit. Here we go. Ready? All right, so we just got done with the uh, Lincoln Southeast Duel warm-up practice. Good practice, good intense practice, getting guys down to weight. Uh, the Southeast Duel is a special one to me. Uh, I spent six years, my first first years coaching at Southeast. There's some a lot of people that I know very well and that I love very dearly uh, that are at, that are at Lincoln Southeast, and um, so it's a it's a special duel. I know Coach Bauer is just doing a phenomenal job, really kind of rebuilding a culture of getting getting. Uh, kids invested into the sport of wrestling and, and into each other and um, they're, a, they're a building program right now. They're getting that foundation back and, and uh, just been really pleased with the progress that they've made in a short amount of time and uh, looking forward to a nice duel. Coaching against Jeff when he was at Southeast was, it was a lot of things. It was tough, it was fun, it was, I mean, I like that's the definition of friendly rivalry, right? It's you know, it's your best friend. You're both, you know, passionate about the sport of wrestling, and you're both competitive people. Yet you care about the other person like a brother. So, yeah, those those duels were always. I just remember those duels being crazy because we we had a lot of close duels. We started to compete against each other, and you know, there was a lot of kids that came through our programs that were really, you know, elite wrestlers. And so we had a lot of lot of close duels. I think we've been back. We were back and forth in a lot of duels. We were back and forth at, at the state tournament. I think ultimately they they got the Lincoln East at the time got the upper hand on us at the at the state tournament. And I think we beat them in more duels. So it was it was different. It was awkward because Keen and I have been you know grow grew up together. Keen and I started. Um, our friendship when he was a kindergartner and I was a first grader. And so we kind of always had this dream that one day we might be able to work together. And here we were competing against each other. And it was kind of an awkward feeling competing against your best friend. Basically the way that it sort of unfolded, Coach Skiles was considering retiring. You know, he had kind of came to that decision of retiring at the exact same time the department chair position for physical education was opening up here at East as well. I sort of knew it was kind of the perfect storm to approach Jeff really seriously and see if he would be interested in, you know, taking that step up for his career and in going after a department chair position for physical education. You know, if he was gonna be making the move in on the education side of things, considering the move on the coaching side of things as well too. And I was in this point of my life where I had to make this this decision, what was best for my family. And if you don't know, I have six kids, so I'm busy at home. And my life, I was struggling with balance and finding ways to be a coach full time and have a successful program and then also be a successful dad and, and to be, you know, fill my role as the father to my kids. Through the struggle, it became more tempting to be able to join Coach McCurdy at Lincoln East. And so initially I, I told Keenan and Drew no. I, I wasn't gonna be able to do it. I said the long text, Drew said, I understand, but I don't like it. And he, you know, we had some good good conversations back and forth, but but after more reflection, I just realized that if I wanted to be a good dad, I, I needed to be on staff at Lincoln East and being able to to be okay, you know, being at home and not always on the wrestling mat or always in the room and and, and doing things in the off season. So eventually I, I told uh, my team, which was probably one of the hardest things to do, I wrote up a big letter and sat them all down. I'll remember that day for a long time, but I sat them down in, in the orchestra room at Lincoln Southeast and I just told them about some of the struggles that I had and, and that I needed to be a good dad and this was the best move for me to do that. Five years later now here at Lincoln East High School, I know I, I made the right decision. I am a better father and it also, Coach McCurdy and I now get to play off each other and I think we just work really well in that co-head coaching role. We, we know each other so well that we can, we can assign tasks and figure out who's going to be better at which. And, and to share those responsibilities is something that I've really valued. And, and even more than that, the thing that I've valued the most is just being able to spend time with him and, and Coach Etherton and Coach McCurdy and all the, the great assistant coaches that we've had throughout the five years that I've been here. So 
without a doubt, I can say that I made the right decision, but it was, it was a difficult decision. And, um, you know, I, I think as soon as we kind of joined forces and, and put our heads together, I think our, our program became really great. But it's been, it's been a joy to just to be able to work with your best friend is, is something that not a lot of people get to do. And so it was the right move, and I'm excited that I am now Lincoln Spartan. tonight is don't no no one's invincible all right the focus this team we need to keep a focus throughout every match and every practice the, the main thing that I disliked the most of this night was when Max got taken down to his back and everyone freaked out and then everyone tried to like make eye contact and get Max out of the match one, nobody's invincible. Any, anybody that thinks that they're invincible is extremely vulnerable. Max needs to know just as much as anybody else. Max is a great wrestler, and uh, I think all of you guys acknowledge that, and you thought it was funny because, because he got taken down, but this is the reality. When you are saying things to him when he's on the mat and trying to get his focus away from the task at hand, which is to take the guy down, is the next move. When you're joking and you're trying to say something to him, it's taking his focus away from what needs to be done. 
okay? So that can be applied to every single one of you is think on the mat. Don't think outside the mat. Don't think you're invincible. There's absolutely no man that is completely invincible. All you can do is the next moment, the next move, the next preparation that you have for the next thing. But don't get anybody from your team, don't be a teammate that thinks anybody on this team is invincible and that can't be beat. And the same thing goes for your opponent. If you're wrestling somebody that's as good as Max, he's not invincible. You can go out there and you can give everything you can and guess what? Crazier things have happened. You can go out there and you can beat somebody that you're not supposed to beat. That's the, that's the beauty of, of wrestling, but you've got to stay focused and, and, and thinking on the mat. And that was, that was one part of tonight that I didn't like, all right? There are other moments that we were a little in focus, and, and the reality is there's moments a lot of the times in practice where we're not in focus, and we're, we're taking 30 seconds to get one repetition done after we break it out. That's one area that we can improve. We're, we're learning from our matches. We're doing a good job getting better as the season progresses, but we've got to continue to do those small things right, and that starts with your mind. All right, that's all I got. All right, at Lincoln Pies 10th, getting ready for the Heartland Athletic Conference Tournament. We're missing a few varsity guys today, missing Gigi Creighton, and we're missing Keith Jensen. Um, and, but we got uh, Noah Mitchell filling in today, and then we're just we're opening heavyweight, but it should be a really fun day. I love this tournament. A little late start because of the weather, but should be uh, exciting. Get to see some real top ranked wrestlers, top flight competition. Let's roll. Step in! Protect the head! Protect the head! Steely, curl up! Curl up high! because of our effort I think that at times there were some moments where I guess I'll call it the expectation of the match kind of maybe got to us a little bit and and you know there were situations where I felt like we were maybe just not wrestling like a crazy man because we were either tentative because we didn't want to you know we didn't want to give up a takedown or we didn't want to you know it's kind of like what we're always preaching to you guys is go out and just let it rip every match and have fun and, and let the fur fly. That's what we want to do above all else is we want to compete hard. And so, you know, I don't think it was a lack of effort today. I think we we want to do a little bit of a better job of forgetting about the bracket, forgetting, trying to forget a little bit of about who we're wrestling and just going out and shaking hands and going to war. 
Super proud of Brandon Bouster today. We talked after the match, he knew he probably didn't wrestle his best match in the semifinals. A lot of things he could have done better, made some mistakes, but he took that loss like a man. He didn't throw a temper tantrum, and he was immediately thinking about how he could learn from that loss, okay? And ultimately, at the end of the day, that is what, that's what sports is all about, right? Is how can you learn from your losses? How can you learn from your experiences to become not only a better wrestler, but a better person? Guys, something that just was really meaningful to me today, I was just noticing in the stands, we had Drake Rinke's dad here uh, coming to watch him. We had AJ Mothersbaugh's parents coming to watch him. We had Bailey Hergott's parents coming and watching. And that's, guys, that's because, that that's not because of the accomplishments that their wrestlers had on the wrestling mat. You know, they're not coming in and watching. Drake's dad is not coming in and watching because Drake was a state medalist. He's coming in and watching because he loves Lincoln East Wrestling and he loves what it does in the lives of people. He loves what it does in your lives and he wants to still be a part of that and get to experience that. And so at the end of the day, we have to bring ourselves back to that truth, that reality that what we're doing as a wrestling team is, is ultimately about becoming better young men. Um, so we did that today, and we got to continue to try to push to do that throughout the rest of the season. Spartans on three. One, two, three. Spartans! experience today and that's the way that it should be every time that you step on the mat we did a lot of things that we need needed to be corrected on and it's a it's a good time to get corrections on it um, right now in January all right um, and sometimes throughout those learning experiences you come away with a win and sometimes you come away with a loss and um, I think that tonight was a very good learning experience all the way around through the wins and through the losses. 
Aiden Ingerson gets thrown to his back, fights off. Um, Chase Kammer figured out how to move his feet in that second match and get to his attacks. Um, you know, Eddie gets caught in a headlock and, and fights through and he gets leg attacks of his own in the next match. Um, Gigi, I'll just say I'll, I'm pretty confident wrestling that kid again after watching you, you know, you can get pinned and still be confident when you wrestle the kid the next time because I'm pretty confident in the positions that you were in that, that you're, that you're going to be able to, to scrap with that guy every time and throw him to his back every time. So it's just now a matter of of finishing at the end so th this is the time to learn these experiences and through wins and losses and, and get better because of it that's all i got good good wrestling tonight guys i just think about case jurgens match against lean i kid you know one takedown a piece in the first period so that probably means they're pretty close like skill wise i mean that kid's a good wrestler and just as the match went on case just separated himself because if you just stay in a guy's face for six minutes straight and you hand fight him and you shoot and you hustle up off bottom every time he tries to put you back down and you grind on him when you're on top and you're just every single position you're wrestling hard you're not thinking about you're not thinking match strategy you're not thinking about like oh how can i wait and get a takedown at the end to go ahead and get the win you're literally just thinking about wrestling hard in every second of the match. All of a sudden, you know, the next thing you know, you're up four points on the guy. So, guys, and, and, that's, and quite honestly, whether or not, you know, you're better than the kid or the kid's, well, let's just say the kid you're wrestling has got a better record than you or he's beaten some guys that have beaten you or whatever. That's how you upset a guy is you stay in his face for six minutes and you get him so frustrated that by the time the third period comes around you're dominating the match you're dominating the third period so great great match okay, Gigi we'll break us out Spartans on three one two three Spartans All right, uh, we are out here at the brand new Bishop Keelan High School. New gym, new facility, it's beautiful. It's our last tournament before state duels, so we'll have a week off next Saturday. State duels, then districts and states. So we're kind of hitting the end of the final season push. Um, we were able to bring a few extra wrestlers today to fill out brackets, so a couple of our junior varsity wrestlers are looking to get some varsity experience today, which is gonna be really exciting for them. I'm excited to see how they compete. So it uh, should be a fun day of wrestling. Under control. Two red. Two red. A lot of time, a lot of time.
Yeah.